beautiful people my name is Bridget and welcome back so today's video is going to be about makeup brands that I'm worried about so these are brands that are like not doing so great they're being pulled from stores or I'm just seeing a shift in things and things that aren't going I guess at least to the average consumer or to me don't seem to be going correct so today I'm going to talk about these brands talk about some things I'm worried about with them it's perhaps a couple of reasons like or a couple of things they could do to improve and of course these are my own personal opinions I don't know the status of these brands how they're doing financially or anything like that and if this is your favorite brand that's okay we can all just disagree and these are just things that I've noticed so without any further ado let's get into the video alright guys before we get started all makeup on this channel is cruelty free so are all the brands I'm talking about in today's video and if you're not subscribed to my channel already I'd greatly appreciate it and we can be friends and stuff and let's go ahead and get into the first brand which is Buxom so Buxom is a brand a lot of people haven't actually tried but you've heard of before Buxom I really think has the best like lip products in their line I think that's the thing with the best reviews from their line they are sold in Ulta stores they're not sold in Sephora but if you don't know Buxom is actually the same company they are both owned by Bare Minerals so Bare Minerals is a sister brand to Buxom however Buxom is not very talked about you never like hear a new Buxom launch even though they do have new products decently regularly but they have a lot of staple lip products it seems like and they have other things as well in their line but if a fun fact I, a couple months ago well it's been a few months now I worked at Ulta for like several months and I went to this thing it was a very early morning thing where reps from brands come they talk to you so you can learn a little bit about their products and the rep for Bare Minerals just kind of talked about Bare Minerals for a lot, really talked about the products and the complexion products for Bare Minerals as well as their like mochi, jelly, squishable stuff that was new at the time. And then at the very last second before like it was time to move on to the next station, she barely quickly threw in like, don't forget Buxom stuff, we have Buxom stuff too. And it just made me seem that like not even the reps who were supposed to be pushing and helping everyone learn about the brands to sell Buxom products doesn't care about Buxom. And I don't think the average consumer is ton buying tons of their products either. So it feels like the company that owns both of these brands really focuses on Bare Minerals, who I think is doing just fine. They have a staple consumer base and a lot of people love their complexion products, not as much their eyeshadows and stuff. But they have a staple base of people who buy them. And I feel like Buxom is supposed to be the more fun, hip, younger demographic for Bare Minerals products with some of the like more fun lip colors and stuff. However, they're not being sold or is promoted the same as Bare Mineral products, even by people who work for the brand. So I don't see Buxom doing that well. And they've pulled a lot off the shelves it seems like their, their display is a lot smaller than it used to be so I don't think Buxom is doing that well something I would definitely like to see improvements on from them would be marketing as well as like nice stable launches that aren't just like we added a couple colors of this so that's what I'd like to see from Buxom because I just don't see how they're doing that well but if you have some Buxom products you love I would love to know what they are down below Next up is Flower Beauty. Now I personally like a lot of Flower Beauty products and Flower Beauty is owned by Drew Barrymore who I have a huge crush on and she's amazing and a goddess. But Flower Beauty is like the original celebrity makeup brand. Flower Beauty has been around forever before the rest of the celebrities started coming out their own lines. And they have a very well known aesthetic for Flower Beauty. It's very light, it's very natural but it's very like soft glam as well. And they've had a couple launches here and there, like I did an advertisement for them on Instagram like over a year ago for their Electro Pop collection. It was very out of the ordinary for a Flower Beauty line, but it was like bright neon colors and I felt out of place, but the products were actually really good. But that's not the aesthetic Flower Beauty goes for, so I feel like that kind of got swept under the rug. Most of the Flower Beauty products are like the soft glam look or natural look. The issue with Flower Beauty is... They're being pulled from Ulta stores. They're in some Ulta stores still, I believe, but they're not in every Ulta store. Like the one I worked at didn't have it, and I don't think there's one in town that carries it. There might be one in town that carries it. Most Ultas don't carry Flower Beauty, and they're also being pulled from Walmart shelves. They used to have a big display in Walmart, and a lot of it is on clearance. Not every single product. But their most popular product is their Light Illusion Foundation, which I gave a really bad review of back in the day because the shade range was terrible. They really even proved it, and I now have one that matches me pretty decently, and their foundation's a nice formula. Just not their stick one, it's not good. But 
I believe that Flower Beauty is being pulled from stores and might not be doing as well now there's a bunch of other like drugstore brands competing for the space like Makeup Revolution is competing for the space I think Pixie is trying to expand into more than just Target and Flower Beauty is being pulled from a lot of shelves so I'm worried about that I feel like the whole natural aesthetic is really easy to keep having products out but new launches aren't very exciting when you know what you're gonna get because they have an overall aesthetic that's very one note I guess but their products are good so I feel like Flower Beauty can stay around for a long time but it's going to be really hard for them to compete with a lot of other drugstore brands if they do go to exclusively online, which I'm worried about for them. So I think something they could do to improve Flower Beauty would be stay in stores as long as you can. I know it's hard to hold shelf space, but that's a really good one. And I would also really like to see maybe like a collab project with someone who has the same aesthetic. Not a lifestyle influencer. I'm tired of seeing lifestyle influencers have nothing to do with makeup, doing makeup collabs. But maybe someone who has a soft glam aesthetic in the makeup community. Maybe get a collab with them. Like, bring awareness. They need more space and more media attention on, like, social media, I think. Because their social media is kind of just a generic brand social media. They're not very interactive. So that's something I would like to see from Flower Beauty. But I do have hope that they can stick around for a long time. So another brand that's also being pulled from Walmart stores, it seems like, even though they're in a lot of stores, they're like in CVS's and stuff too, but in Walmart specifically, in multiple Walmarts, I've seen them have a lot of stuff on clearance, and a lot of people have seen this, and I don't know about how they're doing in Ulta, CVS's, and Walgreens's and stuff, Walgreens's and stuff, <laughs> but this is a Physician's Formula. So my, the one thing I think that really hurts Physician's Formula is the name. It sounds very clinical. I know that's probably good if they're trying to market people who maybe have more mature skin and really want skincare built into their makeup products. However, I feel like that name doesn't scream a makeup brand. So it kind of, it kind of sounds clinically and a lot of people are probably deterred away from that. I feel like one thing, besides the fact that it's coming out of stores a lot, especially with Walmarts, which is a really big retailer, obviously it's Walmart, I feel like Physicians Formula never has anything exciting and they're known for one thing. I feel like when you have a really good thing, like let's say Too Faced and the Sweet Peach palette, they have a whole line of Sweet Peach things, they're actually thriving. I feel like <laughs> Physicians Formula has that butter bronzer we all know, and they don't really have anything else that's really being talked about so much. There are other things people really enjoy, don't get me wrong, but that's the thing everyone knows when they think Physicians Formula. Can you name another Physicians Formula product? Not by just saying, like, blush. Can you actually name, like, an, the name name of an actual product from Physicians Formula? I would love to know if you can. I'm sure a lot of people can. But I think a lot of us can. They think of the butter bronzer. Or maybe the Casey Holmes little collection that has a butter bronzer in it. But I feel like Physicians Formula is known for one thing. And they haven't really gotten out of that rut of the one thing. So don't get me wrong. If you do it well, keep doing your thing. But a lot of the other stuff, like they have a rose setting spray of some sort and stuff like that isn't appealing to anyone that's not really catching anyone's attention that much because there's other things in that space that have the same exact thing going on. So I think Physicians Formula should rebrand, change their name. I doubt it's going to happen because they're known as Physicians Formula. But even PH Beauty would probably sound better than, well, it sounds like PF Chang, I guess. So maybe not, but you know what I'm saying. The name doesn't sound very makeup y. They're being pulled out of stores and they're really known for one specific thing, so. Physicians Formula, what are you doing? I don't know, but you're in a lot of stores, so I think you'll be around for a long time. I'm not saying these brands are shutting down anytime soon by any means. This is just some things I've noticed. Alright, so the last two are brands that I think are probably doing pretty well, and these are brands that we do talk about more often than these others that I've named so far, at least in my little realm, that's what I hear about more. So, <laughs> this is going to be Milani, and I think Milani is doing okay. However, Milani just close their in their affiliate program they said they needed to so I got the email that they're closing their affiliate program because I wasn't affiliate with a Milani I just signed up on their website but they're closing their affiliate program to refocus their brand so I'll, I'll tell you what it says right here I'm not gonna like write it word for word I'm not sure about like how you can share emails but this is the gist of what they said in the email that they're trying to like you know get together a little bit and I think the thing Milani has an issue with issue with is that they don't know what space they're in. They're in the drugstore space, right? But some of their products have raised their prices along with Physicians Formula as well. They've also done this. A lot of drugstore brands have done this. I feel like making a video just on 
drugstore makeup becoming more expensive and why. But they've raised their prices a little bit and I feel like Milani is trying to do a whole bunch of new collections. A lot of them are just available on their website. Like they had a ton of liquid and metallic liquid lipsticks for the Halloween season. They were like just they released a whole bunch of new colors of dark liquid lipsticks for Halloween and you heard nothing about it. So I feel like they have collections of stuff. They're not super well themed or anything and they're not talked about. The only thing I hear about when Milani releases something is if it's a foundation, which is extremely rare, or it's some of those little gilded eyeshadow palettes, which are decent. They're not they're not great for the price. But the color scheme is nothing to write home about. I've heard they're decent quality. I haven't used a Milani shadow in a really long time. But I feel like those little eyeshadow palettes are releasing pretty regularly now, those little obsession palettes or whatever you want to call them. Those are the only things I ever hear people talking about with Milani. Now they have that foundation plus concealer that people really love and use a lot, but it does expire qu pretty quickly. I feel like it separates on you decently quickly, so that's one issue. I don't feel like their products last as well as some other products. I love, and I'm wearing today actually, underneath my lower lash line. They have these little liquid glitter, like liquid eyeliners. I use it as a liquid eyeshadow, just add a little bit of glitter. They have a lot of good products like that, and they have like some little smudgy glitter eyeliners as well. They come in a bunch of nice smoky colors. They have some really good products, but these are not the products that are being promoted. They're really promoting these little eyeshadow palettes because eyeshadow sells, but their best products are not being promoted in the correct way, and I feel like that's a really big issue for Milani. Um, so yeah, like their liquid eyeliners and their liquid glitters are really nice. So if they promoted those kind of products more that have a really cool shade range, I feel like that would do a lot better than these kind of like basic color schemed palettes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I do like Milani. I like all these brands, but I don't know. I just feel like they really need to focus and I feel like that's why they closed their affiliate program, but I get it for sure. Next up is a brand that I think is thriving pretty well but they're not talked about and they are not taken seriously as much as they were at one point. And this, don't kill me, is Urban Decay. So I feel like Urban Decay just came out with one product that makes me think they're on the right track to maybe recovering with the, like, the, the cool, kind of like edgy, fun, colorful, like, woo, style. Maybe a little more punk, I guess, that they once were. And what you thought of when you thought Urban Decay. Because lately it's been a lot of, like... I guess palettes that didn't have much thought into it, like the Urban Decay Game of Thrones, those didn't even match the storybooks or whatever, they just kind of threw a name on it. I like the Stay Naked collection, but it's not like the fun, like, party aesthetic that I want to think of when I think of Urban Decay, like the all night or like, oh my god, I didn't go out, have a great fun night. That's what I think of when I think of Urban Decay, not a Stay Naked natural looking foundation finish or like a Game of Thrones palette and like a bunch of other things they've come out with recently. I think it's a pretty well known, decently known fact that everything except the naked palettes from Urban Decay go on half price or will end up in Nordstrom Rack and things like that. So I feel like this newest really bright electric palette, which I mean it's supposed to be like Three Vise electric palette, which is like a cult classic from Urban Decay that people wanted to come back for so long. This is like the new version of that. They're kind of testing the waters with it probably to see if this kind of bright stuff still sells since we're still talking about the electric palette years later. And I feel like that's the kind of aesthetic that they should be. I feel like it's the kind of the aesthetic that <laughs> I'm tongue twisted today. It's kind of aesthetic that they really do well with. Like their eyeliners are so good. Their heavy metal glitter liners and like glitter liquid shadows and stuff. That's so fun. That's the kind of stuff I want to see from Urban Decay. Not like slapping a brand name, like a show name on your palettes and stuff like that. So even the Naked Cherry and the Naked Honey aesthetic, I thought those were really beautiful palettes. But it's not like what I think of when I think of Urban Decay. And I know the Naked palettes in general go against the whole like rock thing that I'm talking about I guess but I don't know I don't know I just feel like they don't have like that same focus branding and like target audience that they used to they're now trying to be like every middle of the road high-end brand that is at Sephora anyone can shop from and I really feel like they need to stick to more I hate to say it but they would do a lot better if they stuck to like not because of her but because of the style and aesthetic. They stuck to like the Kat Von D audience, you know, people who were like into that aesthetic. Um, I feel like they would do like 
a lot better with their branding and stuff because I feel like they're a little bit lost right now. They do the nakeds and they do certain foundation ranges and certain palettes that are just kind of middle of the road anyone can use. But I feel like they were a lot cooler and a lot talked about more when they were like edgier because it's Urban Decay. I mean, come on, the name in itself says more edgy things. Anyways, you guys, that is it for today's video. Please let me know if you agree or disagree with me down below. I'd also love to know a brand that you're worried about a little bit in the comment section down below. I did, I did consider including House Laboratories by Lady Gaga on this, but it hasn't been around for long enough for me to give like advice other than don't be exclusive to Amazon or do pre-orders for collections, but <laughs> that's a whole different video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you're not subscribed already, I'd greatly appreciate it, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.